Next up are going to be asparagine and glutamine, the two amino acids that have carboxamides in their side chains. Uh, and the way I like to think about these is, well, first we'll write down their, their three letter and their one letter. So we have asparagine and glutamine. And asparagine's single letter is N, coming from this guy. Um, well, that's how I think of it anyway. Glutamine is Q, and you're just going to have to memorize that. <laughs> doesn't work into the structure, um, you're, but you're going to need to know it at some point. So um, Now, the way I think of it is the, um, the functional group in these two side groups is going to be the carboxamide group. So if we just draw that in, because we know we're going to have to work it in somehow. And if you look at uh, the abbreviations, asparagine and glutamine, we have A coming before G. So we're going to start with asparagine. And all you do is draw the carboxamide moiety and connect it to the backbone. And that is asparagine. For glutamine, since it comes after asparagine, we're going to have you just add one more carbon and then connect everything. And that is glutamine. So glutamine has one more carbon than asparagine and they're both essentially a carboxamide group almost directly or through one extra carbon attached to the, um, the beta carbon of the amino acid. Next up is cysteine and its single letter abbreviation is C. It doesn't really work into it but this is just another one you're gonna have to memorize. Uh, it just has a sulfhydryl group attached directly to the beta carbon. So you can think of it as um, a serine, just with a thiol group instead of um, hydroxy, hydroxy group. Next up is lysine, and its single letter abbreviation is one of the oddballs. It is K. So to draw lysine, we are going to draw the K, but without the vertical part, just this. So just like that, we draw the K. And we know it's going to, one of the other things you're going to have to memorize is that it's going to have um, an amino group at the end. So we draw that in. And then connect the dots. So we're going to end up having one, two, three carbons between the beta carbon and the amino group and a total of four carbons as part of the side group itself. So we'll draw that one more time. Lysine is K. We draw the sideways or the branched parts of our K at our amino group and connect everything up. The pKa of lysine is about 10.8, which if you round it to 11, K is the 11th letter of the alphabet. So I don't know, that helps me remember it. Um, hopefully it'll help you. Next up is arginine, and I always start you know, quickly and mentally with its three-letter abbreviation, which is ARG. The R reminds me that um, R is its single-letter amino acid abbreviation, and G reminds me that it has the guanidinium group in it. And also, if we start over real quick, there are two letters before the G for guanidinium, so there will be two carbons before the guanidinium group. So starting from our, our alanine background, which already um, our alanine backbone, which already has the beta carbon in place, we have two carbons and then our guanidinium group. So now we just connect our dots and put in our positive charge and we have arginine. Next up is histidine and its three letter abbreviation is H-I-S. H is also its single letter abbreviation and I always use the I to remind me that it has the imidazole group in, it, in its side chain. So to, to draw this guy down there's no shortcut unfortunately you're just gonna have to memorize it or memorize that this little shortcut here that it has the imidazole because of the I in it. Um, so we'll just draw the imidazole group and connect it to our alanine backbone. And that is histidine. The pKa for histidine is six. I think it's six exactly. And um, a little stupid trick I use to remember that is 
hiss kind of sounds like six. It's a bit of a stretch, but I always take it from hiss to hicks to six, and for some reason it's stuck, so hopefully it, it works for you. And finally, our last two amino acids are going to be the negatively charged groups containing the, carbox, the, the carboxylate group. So here we have aspartate or aspartic acid and glutamate or glutamic acid. So these are their three-letter abbreviations. Um, a little stupid trick that helps me remember it is aspartate is D asped. I don't know. For some reason that's stuck with me. And um, glutamate, it's single letter abbreviation is E, which spells glue, which sounds like it's three letter abbreviation. So that one's nice and simple. Um, just like when we were dealing with the, um, the groups with the carboxamides, the asparagine and glutamine, we're going to do the same thing. The, um, basically the, the moiety of interest in these two groups is the carboxylate group, which we can draw that out real quick. And again, A comes before G, so for aspartate, you're just going to draw the group and connect it directly to the backbone, and you have aspartate. For glutamate, just like with the um, carboxamide-containing groups, we have an extra carbon before we get to the alanine backbone. And that's it. It's, you just remember um, that as aspartate and glutamate have the carboxylate groups, and uh, asparagine and glutamine have the carboxamide groups. You start with the A's and connect it directly to the backbone, and with the um, glutamate and glutamine, you have to add one extra carbon before you hit the alanine backbone. And I think the, uh, the pKa for these guys is around 4. Let me look. It's 4.1. Um, I don't have any tricks for remembering this, I don't think. Nope, I don't remember anything. But if uh, if you if anybody has any that helps, send it in. We'll redo the video. Um, we'd love to get some uh, new ideas from other people outside of our group. Um, so remember, if you uh, draw these out a few times and go through the video once or twice, um, hopefully this will really help you. It's helped everyone we've showed it to so far in class. And uh, let us know if uh, there's any way we can improve it.